My youngest son, I think he would, uh, he's been to a couple of funerals with me and he just sees it as very practical. The person's died, we've got to pay respects, life kind of goes on. So I once asked him, do you think you'd get upset if I died? He was like, come on, Mum, of course I will. It's funny because we'll probably, as we talk, we'll talk about how easy it is to adjust to death. Excuse me. I look at my mum. Sorry. She, I don't think she's going to get over her mum's death. I just don't think she will. How long has it been? It's been just over two years. Oh, okay. But who's to say how long it takes to get over these things? I mean, I looked after both my mum and dad for seven years, and my dad was senile, and uh, mum died first, and I stayed with her for a week in. Um, Bart's, St Bartholomew's, mm -hmm. and I sat beside her bed, literally waiting mm -hmm. for her to die. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it was awful. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they put me into a side room with her, and uh, I was with her when she took her last breath. But the same as your nan, or my mum was full of determination. She hadn't eaten or anything for over a week and still, still she was, fighting. you know, mm. still fighting. Yeah. Mummy died at my mum's home and she decided that she wanted to be at home and we had nurses that came in. The nurses kept saying to my mum, she will not die unless you give her permission to die. If she thinks you're holding on to her, then she will hold on. It's funny you say that, because the last night, um, the final night, me and my stepmom, we were at the hospital, it was about 10 o'clock at night. And I told my dad, I'm gonna walk her home so she doesn't have to go on her own. And he was just like, uh, and like just like responding with breath. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, it looked like the light over him wasn't, they would just leave it on if I would have left. So for some reason, I just felt the impulse to turn the light off. And that morning was then he just like went away. No, I sat with my mom for 10 days. I went back to Cape Town and she was dying. She had emphysema. I sat at her bed and just listened to her tell me stories about secrets and about her life and stories about her life. Lots, so much I, I, I didn't know. It was just so brave of her. And the, the odd thing was that um, when we were talking about mourning, you know, and your mum not getting over it, I'm not sure I mourned, mourned for my mother. Yeah. I'm not sure I did. I was heartbroken. When I went back, I came back to came back home, she died about a week or two later, and I flew back immediately for the funeral. And I thought I had steadied myself, and I thought I was capable of managing this. I wasn't. And I, at the funeral itself, I, I was just a mess. My two sisters were holding me up, literally holding me up. It was so... But, um... I didn't mourn, you know, and I looked back at her. Then? Hmm? What's mourning, then? I don't know. I, well... You know, I, what is it, a deep depression where you just can't let the person go, where, mm. where it's just too difficult to let the person go, you can't cope with their loss? I don't know what you it is. You say something um, Yeah, I guess... Like, my, my dad died when I was six, and I don't think I'm over it. I'm, it took me a while to even speak about it. Until I was 18, I was not able to f speak about it hear it, anything about it. And suddenly at 18, I opened up and my sister told me that I actually committed suicide, which messed me up completely because it changed my whole perspective. Like what was the tragedy was actually a choice and it was really hard to just accept. And <clears throat> I mean, obviously I tried everything and I'm still trying to find ways. But whenever I feel better about it, he always comes back and sorry. I just think grief is an experience and when it's a traumatic one, it doesn't leave us. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You were told when you were eighteen. Your sister told you only then what what had happened. And that made it very different for you, that news? Not anymore, because so many things happened, and then I just accept the idea that I will never know what happened, because nobody was with him. Maybe it was suicide, maybe it was another cause of death. My dad was a very 
very troubled person. He had a lot of depression going on and he was very deep but very dark as well. You see, like, I'm, I'm still crying when I think mm. about it. It's been 20, 22 years. I mean, it's tragic, but maybe it's, it's an everlasting love which will never go away and it will always affect you in the same way. And although it's unspeakably painful, it's kind of enriching because you're keeping that powerful love, that powerful memory alive. Mm. This morning I woke up and I must say I was a bit troubled um, about the things that we said yesterday and all the emotions that it brought up and um, something that Alan told me it felt like what I was experiencing was a lifelong love story that would never go away and I didn't yesterday I didn't register it because I, was, I think it was a bit too much but this morning it just kept going up on and on in my mind and I think the reason why is because I felt like he understood me, even though obviously um, we didn't know each other, uh, but he, he got me and to feel recognized in your grief, I think is a very important step of it because I think that's what's been a big trouble for me is to feel like people didn't get the depth of it. So it felt really sad, but really relieving at the same time. Mm.